Okay, so to start off this project, we're gonna make a start on the top itself. And you can see that the lumber here is pretty rough. There's no way I can kind of glue this together. So I gotta mill it up. You can skip this step by buying already milled lumber, but I kind of enjoy the process. So let's go take these over to the jointer and join them up. Yeah. So like I said, I brought all four pieces over to the jointer to create two flat surfaces perpendicular to each other. That way I have a flat surface to go off when I put them through the planer and the table saw. Once jointed, I then put them through my planer to bring them down to 1 inch and 5 eighths in thickness. Okay, so now that each individual piece has been jointed on two edges, it's nice and flat and it's at the thickness that I want, I gotta rip them down into their individual width. Also, I just wanna say, if I was gonna build this table for a client, I would rip these pieces down to the exact same width. But the table is for me, and I'm trying to utilize the material that I have, which is offcuts from previous projects. So I'm gonna rip each piece down as wide as each one will go. So they'll be slightly different in width, but I don't care. So I measured and cut each piece to remove the minimal amount of material to get two straight edges on my table saw. Okay, so now that all the boards are milled up, they're ready to be glued up to form the tabletop. But before I do that, there's a few important details I gotta figure out beforehand. Okay, so first things first is grain orientation. You see here that I've marked the direction in which the grain goes on each piece. And it's important that you alternate the direction of each piece. If they all flow the same way, over a period of time, the table will start cupping in that direction. But if you alternate it, it helps it stay somewhat flat. Okay, and secondly, if you're like me and you like to use dominoes or biscuits to help align the table when you glue it up, it's important that you roughly mark out the outside of the table before you glue it up. That way you don't put any dominoes outside of that area or right on the line of where you're gonna cut it and then you don't have that exposed domino or biscuit right at the finished stages of your table. Just trust me, I've done that and it sucks. To do this, I use a piece of string wrapped around a pencil and then I just mark the circle from the center of the table. It doesn't have to be exact as it's a rough guide. I put down some marks on the tabletop where I want my dominoes to be cut. These marks also help when you come to align the tabletop when gluing. And at those marks made, I then cut my dominoes. Though dominoes and biscuits aren't 100% necessary, I mean the glue alone is strong enough to hold the table together, but I like to use dominoes to help me with alignment when I clamp it together. Once the dominoes were cut, I then laid my clamps down and then began to glue up the first piece. For the glue itself, I'm using tight bond too, but any wood glue would work perfectly. I glue up each piece with a consistent spread of glue, locating each piece together in the correct order, making sure that the lines that I marked line up. I then clamped all four pieces together, making sure there was no gaps and consistent glue squeeze out. I also like to clamp the tabletop to, I'm using some old levels but a straight piece of wood to make sure that you don't over tighten the clamps and cup the top itself. You want to make sure that it stays nice and flat. The very next day I removed the clamps and then started to clean up any of the glue drips with my sander. All right, so to turn this tabletop into a perfectly round tabletop, we're gonna have to build a little jig to do so. And I'll show you exactly how we do that. Okay, everyone, so to start off this simple project, there's a few things that you need. Obviously, the main thing is a router. For me, I'm using a half inch plunge router, though you can make this jig to suit whatever router that you have. Most routers on the base plate have a couple of holes so that you can mount either larger base plates or jigs to the bottom of the router. So you need to make sure that you have the screws to suit those holes. For me, I'm using a Festool router, so the M6 screw is what I need, though it may be different for different brands. You also need a scrap piece of plywood. I'm using a piece of 5 eighths of an inch thick plywood ripped down to just slightly wider than the base of my router. 
I also cut it to three and a half feet in length so then I can cut anything from one feet all the way up to six feet if I wanted to. So once my plywood was cut, I made a mark dead center down the whole length of the piece. I then removed the base plate of my router to use as a template to help align where the screw holes are. I line the template center of my jig and then mark the two holes to which you screw through into the router base. I then pre-drilled those holes and then countersink one end enough so you can hide the head of the screw. I also cut out a larger hole in the center to allow for different size router bits. I then cleaned up the edges of the plywood with a trim router so it's more comfortable to use and then attach the plywood to the router base. I then flipped the router over and then from the tip of the router bit, which I'll link the one that I'm using in the description down below, I then marked the half of the distance of the table that I want to cut. For instance, I want to cut a four foot table so I marked two feet from the tip of the bit. I then flipped the tabletop over and then on the underside of the tabletop I marked the center. I then screwed through the four foot hole into the center mark of the tabletop. Once the jig was in I made sure everything was lined up and then began cutting. I'll drop the router about 1 8 to a quarter of an inch between each pass. I then slowly, with the help of the jig, push the router into a perfect circle, creating a perfect circle cutout. Once the tabletop was safely cut into a perfect circle, I removed the offcuts, flipped the table over and began filling any cracks and holes with epoxy. I'm using West Systems quick dry two part epoxy with a black pigment. The next day, once the epoxy had dried, I then carefully sanded it down flush and then give the tabletop a good sand from 80 all the way up to 320 grit. Okay, so now that the top is ready to be finished, we're gonna hold off on that for a little bit and then we're gonna make a start on the base. Okay, so like I said, for the top, I'm using materials that I have left over from previous projects. So these all need to be milled up. I'm gonna mill them up in a way so that I can glue them together to create three inch by three inch posts. Though you can totally skip this step and buy already milled lumber. Yeah. So like I did with the pieces of the tabletop, I put each piece through the jointer, creating two flat surfaces perpendicular to each other. I then plane them down to just over an inch and a half in thickness. And then cut each piece to width on my table saw just over three inches wide. I glued and clamped the pieces into pairs and then let it dry overnight. The next day, once the glue had dried, I took them out of the clamps and then put the glued edges through a light pass on the jointer. I then sanded the three pieces down to three inch by three inch square using my drum sander. 
I then cut all three to 45 inches in length on my miter saw. So I milled all my lumber from a base to three inch by three inch square, but you can kind of change that to suit whatever style you want. If you want it thinner, mill or buy it thinner. If you want it thicker, mill or buy it thicker. I cut them down to 45 inches in length, all three of the same measurement. That's to create a dining table at the height of 30 inches. If you want a coffee table or a lower table, obviously it's everything shorter. Now that everything's milled up and we're ready to go, let's start cutting out the middle sections to help the whole thing lock together. Yeah. So now that each piece was cut to 45 inches in length, I lined them all flush and then marked the center of each piece. I then at that center line marked one and a half inches either side, which in total is three inches, which is the thickness of the material that I'm using. I then using my square, I then transferred the outer lines to the next edge. I made sure to check that my markings were correct and then got ready to set up my table saw. I then on my table saw, I set up my dado stack to three quarters of an inch wide and then set it to inch and a half in height which is half the thickness of the material that I'm using. I made sure that my table saw miter gauge was square to the blade and then removed the material in between the lines that I marked. Once all the pieces were cut, I gave them all a good sand from 80 grit all the way up to 320 grit, ready for finish. And before we applied the finish, I needed to make sure that the whole thing fit together and was correct, so yeah. And it was. So I needed to create some flat spots on the points where it met the floor and the tabletop met the base. So I stuck on these round 60 grit pieces of sandpaper to my bench and then kind of shuffled it down so I got a nice consistent flat spot. I made sure to sand each piece consistently and to check that the high spots are all the same throughout this process. To attach the tabletop to the base, I'm using these figure eight attachments. I aligned the attachments to the flat spots of the top of the base and then pre-drilled the holes. I also cleaned up any of the rough sanding marks with 180 grit sandpaper by hand. For the bottom of the base, I'm using these rubber stops to help protect the floor. So I drilled a hole to the exact width of the stop. And then I drilled it deep enough so that the stop would sit about 1 8 of an inch higher than the flat spot. For the finish, as always, I'm using Osmo Oil Poly X. I like to apply the oil with a white pad using my polished sander, though you can apply this by hand either with a white pad or a blue shop towel. You apply a sparing amount and then buff it in and then you wipe the excess off about 10 to 15 minutes later with a blue shop towel. I repeated these steps on the top, bottom and sides of the tabletop and all three pieces of the base. I do this process twice, allowing eight hours to dry in between each coat. Once the finish had dried, it's time to bring it in and assemble the table. Honestly, assembling this base the first couple of times is probably the hardest part of this whole process. But the best way I can explain it is to create an X with the two joints half lapping each other and then the third piece kind of slots into place, making sure that all the top spots are at top and then the bottom spots are at the bottom. Once assembled, I attached the figure eight attachments to the top of the base using a little dab of CA glue and then screwed them into position. I repeated this on all three high points. And then the bottom stops, I attached pretty much the same way using CA glue and then screwed them into position.
I carefully rolled the finished top in and then placed it on top of the base. I made sure to adjust the top to make sure that there's equal overhang from each point of the base. I then attached the top to the base screwing through the figure 8 attachments. And that pretty much sums up this video, 